Hello everyone and welcome back to The Letter, where Johans is getting in our way and it makes me sad. Well, he thinks we're suspicious and snooping. I Which is not like wrong. It. He's being a bratwurst. <laughs> Alright. Both the bratwurst and Hannah <laughs> wants this to be perfect. It would be a disservice and a disrespect to toe out of line and risk it being anything otherwise. And more importantly, I will be blamed for any failure that happens tonight. Mm. True. His intervention almost turns me away. Maybe this is a sign I'm not meant to seek Lorraine out, but... Please, I just... It's really important. Fifteen minutes. Nine. Ten minutes. Any longer and I'll pull you out of there myself. The Bratwurst would be furious if he thinks anyone is touching his precious vine without his permission. Thank you. This seriously means a lot. He steps aside begrudgingly. At this point, it looks like there's no turning back. I ready my hands on the keyboard, knowing that I might need to press any oh, random- Oh, the mirror is down here. Oh. The cellar grants, greets me ominously as I descend. The space feels smaller, with a lot more bottles lining the wall compared to before, and knowing what might be waiting for me here makes things worse. The mirror that had been moved from the study is my goal. I did not return to it after my initial discovery, but the thought of Lorraine, how much I want to see her again, even if it's just for one more time, keeps coming back to my mind. As I walk through the cellar, I have to stop when I feel something crunch beneath my feet. Whatever few bottles were left behind here are now nothing but glass under my heels. Perhaps dropped by one of the many chefs and bartenders the butler had escorted through here before. It made a downright mess with red slick pooling from the remnants of a good drink. With how dark this place is, a person might, a person with a dark enough imagination could easily mistake it for blood. I can't help but think it is, despite the easy logical explanation that had come to my mind, only because of what I'm about to do. It's merely a momentary distraction as I continue to the end of the cellar where the mirror stands. Propped up on the far wall, it gleams innocently while pretending to be a simple and ordinary mirror. How morbid to think this thing can show a person their deepest, most desperate desire and then twist it into an image so dark. That's what I had seen that day. Though I heard Lorraine many times, I had only seen her here within its frame. I wonder if people have discovered it before. How many how many were wasted away in front of it, enamored, and how many were frightened it's away by what they mirror, saw? Woman. Right, yeah, I don't think I don't think the mirror itself has anything to do with it. Yeah, as I stand before it now, nothing. I mean, I think we'll probably run into something here, but I don't think it's no. the mirror itself. Why does it keep doing that? I can barely see my own reflection in this How darkness. How does this even work? Mirror, mirror on the wall? You're thinking something? Some anything? Nothing. Touching its surface doesn't make it magically activate or anything like that. There is no sudden surge of power, and I am not suddenly granted sight. It stays what it is, a mirror. Was Lorraine a Lorraine's appearance in the mirror all some sort of fever dream? Am I really that burdened with guilt and despair that my mind would eat itself in my stress and have me hallucinate such things? Either way, just going here on some crazy obsession for a girl long gone must warrant me a trip to the doctor. Already I feel ill. After a few more minutes in the hopes that something would change, I turn around to leave. There we go. I can just go back upstairs like nothing ever happened, perhaps drop by the party for some hors d'oeuvres, then go home and collect myself. Besides, Mrs. Wright is expecting me, and I'm- Going to leave me again, then, are you? There we go. I stop in my tracks, but I don't turn back. As much as it pains me, I don't look back. If I'm just hearing her again, desperately delusional, and I look back to see nothing, I don't want to give myself false hope. But when I feel fingers around my wrist pull at me, I look back in shock. My first thought is, how in God's name is this possible? And the second is Lorraine. Her hands are cold. Are you that mad at me that you're just going to ignore me, Marianne? I don't know what to say, and I can only stare at her and wonder. She stands there in the mirror, with only her arm extended outward for my sake. I look at the hand still holding my wrist, and when she sees me looking at it, she moves it so that our hands are intertwined, fingers weave together. Seeing her there and feeling her touch meant I'm not crazy, though however impossible and unexplainable this is all to me this right now. This is weird to me. So everybody else's has been like, you know, like the weird music thing for Zach a little bit, but it's always been the crazy dead chick. Mm -hmm. Except for hers. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Pulling her out from there is tempting. I can imagine doing so with ease. We can be together again, Lorraine and Marianne, like nothing had ever happened. But that would be all gr a great big lie, wouldn't it? What? Pack out your tongue. Don't just look at me like that. Say something. 
Even if this thing were some magic portal that could bring back the dead, that doesn't erase anything. Just looking at her, still a younger teenager while I'm already a grown woman, it serves no other reason than to break the illusion that blinds me. I've seen her twice now, always behind the mirror. If this is real, if this isn't some delusion, then why can she only exist behind the glass? You have no idea how happy I am to see you. It's been so long. You don't look happy. I really am happy, but at the same time, I can't help but think about what happened to you. And what does that mean? What are you saying? She gives me this peculiar look, and before my eyes, she moves to step out of the mirror. If I turn, I wrench my hand from her and take a step back, almost as if I'm afraid. I don't know how this is possible, but whatever this is, it isn't real. You can't be real. I'm right here, aren't I? What other proof do you need? No, no, I see you. I hear you, I feel you, but even with all that, you can't be real. You just can't. I saw your body. I helped bury you. You're dead. A deep hurt crosses her face and it just breaks my heart in two seeing her wear that expression. Burying me wasn't the only thing you did. Don't you dare lie. But I'm going to be the bigger woman, aren't I? Let bygones be bygones. I'll forgive you. As long as you stay with me, Marianne. That's why you came down here, right? To find me? Ooh, is she going to try to drag her into your yeah. zombie land? Again, that was the plan. I came down here looking for her, for closure. But this isn't... This isn't just closure. This is something else entirely. I didn't think I would be forced to make such a choice. I need to move on. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Closure, that's all I came here for. Whatever this is... It might as well all be just a devil's trick, and I might as well make some use of it, right? I say nothing at first for fear of angering whatever phantom this is. I take Lorraine's hand and bring it up to my lips, pressing a kiss to her knuckles. She takes it as some sort of invitation to pull me along, to step back into the mirror until only her arm is extended again. I should have been more honest back then, both to you and myself. I know it's too late. I'm sorry, but... But the thought of being with the dead did not agree with me, not one I bit. I can't stay with you. Goodbye, my first love. So what? You're going to leave me for some old trophy wife? That's it, isn't it? You're going to leave poor Amy Lorraine and go after the next rich, pretty blonde that you see. This is a mistake. All these years, guilt has been my driving force. I felt so guilty for what I did, what I didn't do. She thinks she can guilt me into being complacent, but she realizes otherwise as I pull my hand away from her. And going by the look of anger on her face, an anger that runs cold, she did not like the fact that I'm not some puppet on a string. Had she chosen her words carefully, I would have accepted whatever punishment Lorraine chooses to give me. Guilt had ran my life and it might have very well ended it, because I deserved but what it. what I did, I did to me. The blood in my hands is mine, not yours. Whoever or whatever the shadow is, my gut tells me she's not Lorraine. Yep. Yeah, I keep talking as if she is. I broke your heart, not your neck. Don't you dare deny it! It was your fault! Because I loved you more than I dare to admit? Yes, that was my fault, but I never meant to hurt you like that! Despite my words, no matter how sincere they are, she appears angry, enraged in fact. It's been years since I last saw that face, and even now the memory of it is still etched deeply in my mind. The hurt, the tears, the hate spilling from her eyes that day, the moment I rejected her. Rejected myself for who I am, and she definitely will hate what I'm about to do next. To my left, a wine rack. And from there, I take a bottle and pray to all saints I can remember. For all my sins, for every hurtful word I've uttered, for what I've driven her to do that day, what I've forced her what into. What are you doing? I do it without thinking twice. Quickly, before I can hesitate, I grab a bottle and send it straight toward the mirror. <laughs> Shards of the bottle and the mirror are sent flying everywhere as Lorraine's screams echo in the cellar. How Bitter. much did that bottle of wine cost? Yeah, this Yo, is not gonna go- Oh, going we are so dead. Kill you. Bitter, searing. Like every wounding accusation she hurled at me. They've never left me, and I doubt they ever will. But with this, I can move away from them, from her. Live my life as I should, free from the burden. Her burden. Because Lorraine, I know, the real one, the person I loved, will never want me carrying this to my death. And as the screaming dies down, I can't help but mutter weakly. It's done. It's done. Mirror, mirror no, on the wall. No, it's not. No. Lorraine. Forgive me, Lorraine. Dot, 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 dot. 
I take some time to compose myself, breathing in and out, stamping down on the tremors still racking my hands, straightening out my jacket and fixing my hair. All a weak attempt of returning myself to someone resembling my normal self. That would probably be easier to do with so with a mirror, but I likely won't be able to stand looking at one for a long well, time. Now. I should probably go back up there. Party to attend, rich socialites to do business with and food to eat. Mrs. Wright will be happy if I make some time for it anyway. Yet yeah, one last time to the shattered glass beneath my feet. I'm sorry, Lorraine. May you see God's light on the path. Turning around to leave and for good this time, the uneasy smile on my face falls as I see Lorraine whole and well. Come on, Mac. You really didn't think it would be that easy, did you? You get bonus <laughs> points for trying. But Crap. You should know an eight in charisma is not enough to turn on dead. She advances towards me, backs me against the wall. I can't even reach for another wine bottle without putting myself within her reach. Despite my earlier bravado, I didn't think she'll be able to exist at all without the mirror. Can you blame me though? It's not like I'm an expert on the supernatural. Not, you shouldn't be. What, after the mirror? Did you think just moving on will erase what you did to me? You're nothing but a murderer, Marianne. A murderer. Stay back. You're not real. Leave me alone. Stop. I'm trying to move on with my life, so why won't you let me? Please, just get out of my head and leave me be. I try to find an exit where, when there's a click. The next thing I know, I'm falling back into darkness. Oh, crap. Behind closed doors? I fall on my back and a door slams shut behind me. In a daze, I look around warily and find myself in another room entirely. On the other side of the wall, some sort of secret passage, perhaps. An underground tunnel that has me wary and frightened. It also proves that the oddities in the mansion's floor plans are a lot more than just little discrepancies. Dot, dot, dot. I expect Lorraine to jump out at me from the darkness at any time. A breeze blowing through the tunnel has me relieved, though, at the idea that there is still a way to escape should that happen. That is way better than being trapped underground with only God knows what that was. A funny thought comes to mind as I start walking to where the exit might be. I think about how Mrs. Wright would be so disappointed if I didn't show up at the party. I imagine how furious Mr. Wright would be for breaking one of his wine bottles. Even Johan's reaction comes to mind, though I don't really know with that guy. <laughs> one thing's for sure is that I would be calling Cam and Haruna for drinks as soon as I get out of here. Ah, crap. Here we go. That noise has me wary. A ghastly thing, a corpse of a woman leans on the wall. Her arms and limbs, almost every inch of her lithe body is peppered with wounds and rotting flesh. And it is then that the putrid smell of blood and gore hits me, making it so I don't even question how I missed it in the first place. How long has this been here? Ugh, oh, that smell. Oh, you're a nasty one, aren't you? I flinch as the thing twitches. As soon as it opens its eyes and looks at me with a smile, there's nothing on my mind but horror. I break into a run. Dot, dot, dot. I try to keep running no matter how much my legs and feet scream at me to stop. I keep going even when I look back and see nothing of her anymore because I can still hear her. The scampering of her feet, the words she tries to form with her bloodied mouth, and the painful sounds of bones grinding against each other as she moves closer and closer to me. <sighs> how long are these damn tunnels? There's a split second where I know that the thing is right behind me, a strange sensation creeping over my limbs where her presence looms over me, and then suddenly... I can't even do anything before I'm yanked by the hair and pulled back. I still, I struggle up until I'm thrown to the side like some rag doll. I hit the ground on my side and the musty smell of old hay that reaches me is my only indication that I'm still alive. Please don't hurt me. Crap, what is it? My body hurts and I keep my eyes shut tight, afraid of what might happen What's next. What's wrong, Marianne? Are you really afraid of little old me? There's only dread seeing how she's followed me even here. She looms over me, backs me further in the cell that I was thrown Please. in. Please. It's so cold. I don't want to be alone, Marianne. Why won't you stay with me? Why would you leave me? Why? What are you? <laughs> Lorraine turns and shifts into that thing from before. And with that, the same gruesome grin, it takes a step forward towards the cell, towards me. I barely scramble to my knees when the door to the cell slams shut and it just stands there staring. Shouts for help ring out in the tunnel, but none of them are coming for me. I'm more paralyzed and shocked by what is happening. My throat tightens at being fooled by the image of Lorraine at the thought of being trapped down here. So then where? Help me, help me, oh help me! Are you getting all this on camera, Carl? Yeah, but are you going sure this is a good idea? We're breaking and entering here. Don't worry, the only Other brat. haven't been here in a long time. <laughs> Look at this thing, though! It has writing in blood like some cheesy 80s horror prop. Wait, I have oh, an my. idea. 
Dun, dun, dun. Oh man, that's genius! What kind of bot hair would even take this thing seriously? Maybe we can stick this in Rowan's backpack. That's Warrior's kid with panic. Oh. Panic gone wrong. What? Spit it out! Behind you! There, in the corner of the cell, a digital camera comes flickering to life, and the video is played black on back on the screen. It's hard to even consider paying attention to it when my life is on the line, but when the ghost doesn't move and the teenager's mocking shouts of help me fill the cell, I just had to watch it. And what I had seen, students judging by their St. Goretti uniforms, they were holding... And that thing, the woman, she... Keep slipping back and forth. I knew what? it! I no, knew it! There's no quick time event there? I was oh. I was like all ready you, to go that like whole time. Adrenaline there. So she's locked in So that's why she wasn't at the party. Yep, yeah, so she's locked in like the weird underground tunnels. But did she sound like she said that there was people yelling help me? No, I think she was yelling. I thought she said she heard other people too, because I'm wondering if there's other people down there. Um from, you know, like the the missing people that they haven't found? I mean that could be. All right, so now we're going to see things from Rebecca's point of view. This one will be interesting because she wasn't in a lot of this. Yeah. Wait, how did we already lose points with Ashton? <laughs> or is that, I wonder if that's as the result of like the other choices we made. Maybe. Well, but we haven't played as Ashton yet, so I don't, I don't really don't get it. I have no idea. All right. Anyway, Whatever. here we are. As Rebecca. This is how it begins, or so they say. With a gentle wind drifting through wide open windows, muffled laughters and footsteps fading behind the empty hallways and the light kiss of the afternoon sun, soon there will be a call, a crossing of thresholds into the unknown. Maybe we are off to some grand adventure or diving into another gripping mystery. Oh, one can't really tell. For all I know, a hero might even come sweep me off my feet if I'm lucky. That's not exactly a bad thing when you think about it. But this is far from one, isn't it? A riveting tale, that is. The mild breeze, the faint murmurs, the warm rays painting every nook and cranny a fiery hue. They are all as real as they can get. As much as I want to write a little tale out of this, I'm far from someone who can. Fleeting fancies, that's what these are. Merely passing thoughts that occupy an idle mind while waiting for another busy work day to end. Did it already say we were at the 28th? I don't think it gave a day. I want to say it said the 28th. Oh, I don't but know. But I, I don't know. I don't see any. We'll just keep going. Yeah. I was just kind of curious where we were in the mm -hmm. in the timeline. Then again, maybe in another life, I am one. Who knows? But at present, what I have and what I've chosen to be, well. I won't last years here if I find teaching rowdy adolescents a tedious job, will I? Admittedly, the whole affair isn't exactly as grand or exciting as I imagined as a child. If I were so stubborn and too passionate about the whole idea, I probably would have quit a long time ago. But it's always the kids that make it worthwhile, isn't it? As if in agreement, as soon as my pen slides into a neat circle against the papers I'm grading, the final bell rings. Like a dam that is open, students begin piling out into the hallway soon after. For a short minute, I let the noise fill my ears, let my mind wander to a place far removed from all the hubbub. Solitary moments like this have come few and far between lately. Even my own home hasn't been as quiet as I usually prefer. Though in hindsight, the entire place hasn't been the same either since Isabella moved in next door. And if her fussing over a minor cold last week tells anything, I might as well throw away any idea of solitude out the nearest balcony so long as she lives nearby. <laughs> at the memory, my eyes automatically shift over the bottle sitting at the edge of my desk. <laughs> a chuckle escapes me as I reach for it. A little ball of energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> that big baby. Mother Hen, she calls me, and then says and does the same thing right after. It's not that I'm unused to being on the receiving end of other people's worries, or I feel any sort of apprehension over her fretting. If I am to be completely honest, it's actually amusing how someone can be childlike one minute, then act like a responsible adult the next. But there's a dissonance there, both in her actions and words. Although she may not look like it, may not say anything, may not lose her cheer, one way or another, I know these troubles have weighed down on her lately. Her face says it all. That... That big numpty... Numpty. What? <laughs> Something British. Assuming. 
If she thinks I won't notice, she's got another thing coming for her. That's how she has always been. I do understand that part loud and clear. It's just that I'd really rather not press pass another burden onto her. Or become one myself. Aren't I supposed to be the one taking care of them? No, I guess that's simply one of those things people eventually grow away from once you've all started leading different lives. Not completely different, I hope. Somehow, the thought makes me feel uneasy. Thankfully, before stranger ideas can take root in my head, a faint buzzing comes from my bag, cutting through the rest of my thoughts. A small frown forms on my lips when the screen lights up and an unknown number flashes. For a long second, my thumb hovers over the answer button. Even the voice that responds once I do accept the call is wholly unfamiliar. Hello? Yes, I... Yes, speaking. Uh, who is this? Oh, sorry. Rose Cooper. Briar Realty Corporation. Briar Realty? Oh, this is probably oh. when she injured herself. Yeah. My frown deepens as I straighten from so my chair. So we're back at like the 18th. Yeah, so we're pretty early. Something in her tone, despite sounding remarkably friendly and light, doesn't sit quite well with me. The rigid pause that follows doesn't help ease the tension that has suddenly descended either. Miss Cooper? I... Yes. Things are a bit busy on my end. I apologize. I'm not certain if Isabella has mentioned anything before, but we're working together on a property at the moment, and... The Armengarde Mansion, yes. She said something about that earlier. Is there a problem? This is about Isabella, actually. She wastes no time relaying everything. The details she provided are admittedly a bit vague, but enough for me to get a gist of what happened. It isn't the bad sort I'm expecting, though still worrying, especially with words panic attack and pale looking a bit sickly woven together in one foreboding sentence. But as quickly as it surfaces, I stomp down the urge to demand answers right then and there. Now isn't the proper time for useless questions. I'll find out soon enough regardless. To Miss Cooper's credit, she neither hesitates nor falters all throughout. There's some sort of comfort in knowing Isabella has someone like her to guide her, though not as much as I would have liked. After all, this is Isabella we're talking about. What are the chances she just said a bunch of excuses so she won't get sent home? High. Very high. Oh, she's- she is so going to hear it this time. You were listed as one of her emergency contacts, so I thought it'd be best you know about this. How is she? I is she doing okay? I had her take a break for now, but honestly, I'd feel better if someone were to pick her up and take her home for some rest. Anthem's a fair distance from Luxbourne. I really don't want her going off on her own. I do it myself, but oh, you know how it is today. Pig day. People everywhere until the open house ends. I'm really sorry to ask this of you, Miss Gales. I know you're busy. Oh no, no, it's all good. I was just about to leave from work. I hope to leave early today anyway. A few minutes ahead wouldn't hurt. I can be there in a few, uh, 30, 40 minutes tops. Is that all right? More than fine, Miss Gales, thank you. We're supposed to be here until... Oh, excuse me, one moment, please. Yes, ma'am. The faint hum of conversation echoes from her end. It sounds as though the place is buzzing with more people than you'll expect from a regular open house. I was skeptical at first. The house is old, not to mention its inconvenient location in Luxbourne's outskirts. Who wants to live in a place almost an hour's drive away from the comforts of a city? But from what little I can hear, it appears Isabella has every right to be optimistic about this sale. If I didn't understand why she was so adamant refusing my offer to help before, I think I do now. To some degree. I'll be resuming the tour soon. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. I really need to get this thing going. Lord knows how I'll salvage the situation here. It shouldn't be anything complicated, but still, clients. They can be difficult when they want to be. Anyway, just look for me when you get here, alright? I shouldn't be too hard to miss. No problem. Thanks for letting me know about this. Just... Just make sure Isabella stays put, please. Heaven knows how stubborn that girl can be. Oh, believe me, I know. Don't worry about it. I'll have a few of our staff keep an eye on her for me until you get here. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. I appreciate it. The whole thing ends on a surprisingly pleasant note. If only the same can be said for the news she brought. I allow a brief minute to pass to ease whatever tension has latched itself firmly to my nerves, but no matter how much I wish for it, my mind stubbornly refuses to do so. My hands are unsteady against the papers I pretend to arrange after. Lucid thoughts, every single ounce of it grimmer than the other, grows with each passing second I linger. 
Something about this whole thing, along with the sudden unease and nagging worry, screams off. Wrong. This isn't the riveting tale I've hoped to step into today. Even on a rush, getting everything in order before leaving takes nearly a good quarter hour. October 21st. Okay. That's the date we're on. Yeah, okay. So that is the that is that day. I don't know why I thought the 28th. I think you just wanted it to be the 28th because you just want to know what the heck is going on, man. Yeah. I think the 28th was the day that we were on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. By the time I make it out of the classroom, the commotion has already died down, dwindling to mere echoes and distant laughters. From the nearby room, melodies from a rehearsing band drifts freely into the air, filling the almost empty hallway with their warm, lively tunes. Any other day, I'll stop, bask in the music, and enjoy what little peace it brings. Not today, however. My steps are brisk and sure as I march to Edward Hall's exit. The sooner I confirm Elizabeth is okay, the sooner I can shake off this net niggling. Niggling? Niggling? I've never heard that word before. All right, feeling. It's a British thing, I bet you. Probably. Feel like nagging feeling, I bet you. <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought maybe it was a typo, but. Do you have a niggling feeling today? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> For one reason or another, that single call, of all possible things, has thrown everything off kilter. I'd rather this be over with as quickly as possible. So much that I nearly barrel over a student in my haste. Though, perhaps it is really the other way around. Oh. oh God. When I look down, a set of eyes, bright and hopeful, stare back at me. Her arms are wrapped around my waist like a vice <laughs> at my attention. A grin spreads over her face. Uh, what? When it was Tardes, Miss Pink? <laughs> Oh, is it not voice acted? Hello, Kylie. You know, you aren't supposed to run into people like that. Sorry, Miss Pink. <laughs> she loosens her hold on me, but not a hint of guilt or regret appears on her. If anything, it seems the remark only amused her. A smile appears on my face before I can help it, matching the one on her own. Just remember not to do it again, all right? You could get hurt. <laughs> you sound like my mama when she's scolding Rowan, Miss Pink. No I'm sure your mama only means well. I know she'll be worried sick if one of you were to get hurt. Where's your brother anyway? Aren't you two supposed to be heading home now? Rowan said he's got some stuff he needs to do before we go. I think he's taking too long. But he promised to buy me jelly babies today. If I keep what are... he's doing a secret for mama and papa. What are jelly babies? Any chance you'll tell Miss Pink about it? She shakes her head, both her hands going to her mouth as if to keep a precious secret from spilling out. I need a promise. Are they like Send Sour Patch Kids? What? Are they like Sour Patch Kids? I I'm on this Jelly Baby thing still. <laughs> Probably some sort of like Jelly Bean thing. Oh, something like a gift? Like a deal. Tio promised to take him somewhere cool when he's old enough. Rowan's gonna prove he's a grown up. Oh lordy. <laughs> Blaster slips free from my lips. The teacher in me wants to give whatever this Tio is a reprimand for bringing about this kind of behavior in children. But if Bolsora's kids are so fond of him, there shouldn't be anything to worry about, yes? At any rate, they're nothing but well behaved, both Kylie and her brother. Rowan the eldest may have an occasional odd streak in and out of class, but their parents taught them well. I see no reason to cast any suspicion of bad behavior on as them. As long as it isn't anything dangerous, alright? It's not! Cross my heart! My drawings are a lot prettier than what he's doing anyway. Tio said so. Do you want to see? I drew one earlier at class. Is that why you're here? Not really. I was going to show it to my friend first. But since it's you, I'm sure she wouldn't mind if you see it before she does. Oh, uh, oh no. I can't stay right now, Kylie. Her face falls immediately after the words are out. A small part of me feels responsible for that crestfallen look, but as much as I want to stay a little longer, there's another place I need to be at right now. And frankly, another child to look after. Taking both of her hands, I kneel in front of her and muster the most rueful smile I can give. At her age, I'm quite sure she already understands what I'm about to say before they're even out. Remarkably, she doesn't look away or pout as I'm expecting her to. I'm sorry. You know what? Rowan has a class with me on Monday around this time. Why don't you drop by again next week? After class? I'll even make sure to wait for you. It's just that I absolutely must leave now. My friend had an accident earlier, and I'm the only one she has here. What about her mama and papa? 
Her family lives really far from here, I'm afraid. Do you remember where Asia is? The southeast part? That's where they are. Her eyes immediately light up at my question. Just like that, I know I've earned the girl's forgiveness. Oh, just like Takako. Who? My friend. She said she used to live there, only just a little higher than southeast. But she hasn't come home in a long time, so she doesn't remember much about it anymore. Melody says it's weird I talk to her, but I think she's just shy. They could be good friends too! Don't you think so, Miss Pink? Maybe if you introduce them properly, they will be. That's what I think. Takako's just lonely. If she makes more friends, she won't be anymore. Is your friend like that too? A little, possibly. To be honest, sometimes... Sometimes I can't tell with her. After all, Isabella has always been the kind to hold a smile, even when things have taken a turn for the worse. Five years and one will think it's enough time to know a person. But when you consider it, come to think of it, after all, all these years, I've never, not even once, seen her cry. Not over trivial matters or even when things are tough. Okay, you can go to her. I'll just show you my drawing next time. Thank you. Remind me to buy you a huge glass of parfait, all right? No, I'll get a stomach ache. Takako says so. <laughs> a small one is okay. I'll remember that. Say hi to your friend for me. I will. I'm sure she'd love to meet you too. See you, Miss Pink. I'll see you later, Kylie. London Bridge is falling down, falling down. She doesn't look back or wait for any sort of goodbye from me. With a song and an extra spring in her step, she bounds across the corridor with as much spirit only a child her age can have. As if the conversation has never taken any downhill turn for her at all. As if there isn't a single thing to worry about in the world. Not long after, she disappears behind a door, leaving behind strings of an old familiar rhyme lingering in the air. Carefree, unbidden, untroubled moments like this, I envy her. And as I resume my hurried pace, a tiny whisper at the back of my mind wishes the same could be said of myself and my own worries. Luxmore may be a small city, but it's no stranger to hellish rush hour traffic. But surprisingly, getting out of the city today proves more of a breeze than a hassle. A relief considering how none of my calls to Isabella have made it through. Either the reception's really bad over there or she's ignoring them on purpose. Bolt does nothing to ease the disquiet in me. The rest of the, my drive passes without much incident as soon as I'm out the busy streets. In less than 30 minutes, the mansion looms ahead of me. For all the fuss Isabella made about the house, it remains a thing of beauty. Unlike Luxborn, the estate and the nearby Anselm village stand as its complete opposite. Living and breathing the songs of the old, whispers of a once... Something, something, something matterist, Nick, something, something. Whispers of a once booming... Uh, once booming haven lingering in the air. Contemporary conveniences aside, it's a place I'm glad modernization hasn't wholly touched. It's just a shame the locals know more of the silly hearsay than the history itself. If I could only knock some sense into these people! Sadly, complaining is all I can afford to do. As much as I want to give them a piece of my mind, it isn't why I'm here. I don't think these rich types will appreciate getting a lecture from me either. I have as much business with them as they have with me. With a heavy sigh, I give myself one last second to take in the scenery before heading up the main entrance. Most of the guests are already heading out. Though some still linger, it's mainly just to take photos of the house's facade or its various rooms. I pause for a moment, scanning the small crowd gathered at the foyer, looking for any sign of that familiar ponytail among the sea of hats and heads. No sign of her. Didn't they leave? No <laughs> sign of the other staff or Miss Cooper either. Because Ash was here. I can't remember if they all left together. That was so long ago. I know. I can certainly look for Isabella on my own, but in a place this big, I'd be lucky if I didn't end up lost or find her before we need to meet with Zachary and Ash tonight. Sighing, I search, I reach for my mobile and redial her number, the gesture familiar now after so many attempts earlier. If she doesn't answer, I can still try contacting Miss Cooper. I just hope the network reception will cooperate this time. This side of the country has never been popular with the tech savvy, after all. To my relief, it only took three unsuccessful tries. The fourth one, right as it's about to switch to another intercept message, the, it, the line finally rings. Silence follows while I wait for her to pick up. The ringing going far too long for my taste. By now, most of the visitors have already cleared out. All I have for company are the faint murmurs and the eerie calmness left in their wake. A sudden hush settles and gives way to noises louder than they're ever meant to be. Doors creaking and slamming shut in some distant part of the mansion, floorboards groaning under the sheer weight of the house's history. In the now empty hall, they all reverberate with special clarity against the walls. 
Just keep, just keep going. <laughs> like this, this know, old I'm, story seem almost this, almost have a ring is true this to it. Stuff in this that I'm kind of like. All right, we get it. The house is old. It creaks. Let's move on. Yeah, I think I think it's trying to illustrate all the thoughts she's having, like with how long it's taking for the phone to ring. But it would have went to voicemail yeah. already. Like this is more like Usually. thirty like rings. I don't get to stray too far into the ugly line of thought, however. Not a second later, a click sounds from the other end. Uh, hello? Isabella? Ooh. Miss Cooper called earlier and... Help me. Isabella? But she hasn't seen the letter yet. Bell? Are you alright? Without any warning, the call gets cut off. Busy notes blare sharply against the heavy silence. But above the noise cutting through the mute air remains the faint cries of a woman. From beyond the foyer. My hand falls to my side as I cast a weary look around, waiting for someone to come running. Surely I can't be the only one here hearing this. There must be there must still be some staff hanging around, checking things out, but no one does. Not even when her sobs turn more frantic and anguish. Excuse me! Hello? Who's there? I Isabella? Isabella? I is that you? No answer. Growing anxious, I amble over where her cries come from, each step slow and cautious towards a door on the other end of the room. While I'm far from someone who readily gives in to fear stories lacking factual basis, the vague, restless feeling I have I earlier immediately returns to me. And despite myself, my heart begins to race and my breathing quickens. Bell? Bell, it's me. Miss Cooper called. Is everything okay? Abruptly, all of it stops. My whole body tenses, mouth dragging in a ragged breath, ears straining for any other sound yet to come from the other side, but nothing follows. Instead, the quiet only lends itself to the heavy tension in the air, as if every small moment will disturb the fragile stillness hanging in the room. I wait for another second. Then, with caution, I reach for the knob. My fingers barely graze the brass handles when a hand falls on my shoulder. Excuse me, ma'am? No. It's Marianne. Uh, oh, oh no, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. It sounded like Marianne. No, I... I it's... Uh... Still really, my gaze shifts back to the door as if any second now the cries will start again or whoever's inside will burst out of the room. But I don't get to dwell on these. The woman's worried voice breaks through the haze in my mind again, oddly soothing to the thick of my unease. Even if the concerned look comes from a total stranger, finally being in the company of someone else is somehow comforting. Ma are you okay? Uh, oh, no, I'm fine. This is probably just... Is some, it just the house like walking cold. into the house she makes herself known to people and only if you read the letters when she's like out for your blood when she yeah tries to get you to help that could be well we'll just have to keep investigating in the next episode crazy house yeah that's weird this is the first time I think we've had someone like hear those sounds without having seen the letter I'm pretty sure this is where it's just unfortunate with these timelines too. I feel like, did she not see it already? Did Isabel not show her? Did she see it in Isabel's room? I don't know. No, because this is like this is the day she found the letter. Rebecca didn't see it until we go to Zach's movie thing tonight. Okay. So I'm I'm pretty sure. So hmm. we'll have to find out what's going on in the next episode. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.